Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, let us pray. Father, I thank you for another opportunity for us to be here today. I thank you that you have given us this, this chance, this um, privilege to study your word and to learn from your word. I know it's called Sunday School, and it's like going back to the basics. But Lord, I thank you because once our foundation is right, you can build upon it correctly. I ask that every foundation that we have we have that is not of you, that we haven't built correctly, that hasn't been based on your word, that it will be removed and uprooted in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you help me, even as I speak, that Lord, you would speak through me. Are you, Holy Spirit, I know that you are the ultimate teacher. You will teach each one of us. We'll hear a voice behind us saying, this is the way we should go. Hear this. This is what we're supposed to be listening to. I ask for this in the name of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning. I let you say good afternoon. <laughs> good morning, everyone. It's an honor to be here today. Um, today um, we're going to be talking about Christian social responsibility. Um, it's an interesting topic. I think it just follows. It just continues from where we um, where we started or where we continued. Oh, good morning, Muji Bolariwa. I hope I got the name correctly. <laughs> good morning. Thank you for saying good morning back. So we're just going to be continuing from where we stopped last week. Last week, we were talking about a helping hand. And I think it's really interesting because when I looked back about look back to what we discussed and what I wrote down, we didn't exactly go in the, in the direction that I thought we were going to go, but that's perfectly fine. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. I believe that, you know, when I pray, he says that when I pray, I should believe that he answers us according to his will. And the will that I know that he wants is for us to understand his word, understand him. So if it didn't go the way I planned, that's perfectly fine. I just know that the Holy Spirit, I know that Holy Spirit is teaching us and he has taught us. So we we're talking about helping hand. And this is what we're supposed to have, <laughs> what we should have learned. But I'll just summarize what we actually learned and what we should have learned. So what we learned last week from what I remember was that one, um, we should first of all, we should first of all be um First of all, it's from the uh, what's it called? memory verse. And it says that we should do good to those, to every man, all men, especially or particularly to them who have the household of faith. And I remember like what uh, Stoneme and she was talking about, you know, sometimes you, you, you don't even know that the people around you that are the closest to you are the ones that actually need the helping hand. You keep looking outside and keep looking um, externally. But sometimes it's the people that are very close to you that actually need help. They need help either with um, doing stuff for them uh, financially, emotionally. You know, sometimes somebody just needs a hug, you know, or somebody needs a phone call. Nobody has sent a text. Nobody has asked after them, you know. And it's somebody close by. It might not be even somebody far. And not only that, even, you know, when you want to do stuff, um, things for people, as in one of the things I really love about Love Assembly, see, you cannot give what you don't have. And it's unless you receive love. And that's why um, God has shed his love abroad in our hearts, because when you have received love, it's easy for you to give it out. So it's difficult for you to give what you don't have. So one of the things I love about Love Assembly is you re we receive love from each other. If you're not receiving love from from someone in love assembly or just love assembly like the people that come into love assembly because we are love assembly if you're not receiving love there are two reasons it's either one you're not part of us or two you're rejecting it but because it's there to it's there to receive as in just make yourself available open it is a scary thing to be transparent and to be vulnerable but i thank god that is love assembly is a safe place we we love you i just i don't know why i just said that but you're loved i love Every single one of you, and I want to appreciate. You know, I was talking about Thanksgiving the other day, and I want to appreciate every single one of you, one of you since we started um, online Zoom um, Sunday school and making it interactive and being part of this. You know, it's it's not easy. You could easily say, "I don't need to be here. I'll be here at I'll be at church at ten o'clock, and that's fine for me." But for you to actually be here and um, interacting, giving your own um, suggestions, being part of the school, being part of the class. 
for me is amazing because I cannot I cannot just sit down and be talking to myself. This will not work. So it's great that you're here, and I'm, I really appreciate every single. I can't call your names, but you know yourself, all of you. Whether you come for the first time or you've always been here, I want to appreciate every one of you. So that's what we were talking about in Helping Hand. We also spoke about that helping people, that's just towards the end, that helping people doesn't mean that they are lazy. It just means that sometimes they are, that's just what um, the circumstances in which they are in. And then we talk about being discouraged. You know, sometimes, you know, you help people and help people and help people and you, you're you discouraged. And I think that's why I wrote these things um, and that I thought we were going to speak about Um when you help someone, do you expect something back? And if you expect something back, is that the reason why you're disappointed when you don't get it? The thing is, is God that is that rewards us for helping. And um, I wrote there at the end, God loves when we give and he will always pay back in ways we least imagine. You know, I just I I remember there was a time when we we're raising um, um funds for compassion um operation Christmas child and it was Sister Pe that was leading that prayer and she was saying that you know when you're giving you don't even know that God is giving you back but from back from the back end or from the side or I don't even know how else to put it as in how she put it but it, it really struck me because you know you're healthy you're strong you you have a job you have you have um, a way to help somebody financially you can actually you have time. No, maybe sometimes you might not have um, money or anything, but you have time and you can give that time. It's, it's something that uh, you don't know the day that you need time. Somebody is the one that will come and sit down with you the whole day and just spend time with you. And that is the kind of thing that God does. And, you know, um, I'm also reminded about the, 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 the scripture that says that we, that every, every something supplies. Oh, I was reminded. Um, every something supplies. Somebody should remind me. Every, every, Yes, I know somebody wants to remind me every something supplies, you know, like the body, and then oh sh sorry, I forgot. Joints. Every joint supply. Thank you. Thank you. That sounded like my husband, but I'm not sure. Uh, that sounded like Mr. Bams. Okay. Um yeah. so it was okay. Thank you, Bray White. Right. So today we're going to be talking about Christian social responsibility. And it continues from helping her because it extends. And the memory verse is taken from um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. And I'll, if you can unmute and um, if you can unmute and uh, repeat after me, that would be great. So we're going to be repeating Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. And it says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so please repeat after me let your light so shine before men let your light so shine, light so shine for men. men that they may see your good works that they may see your good works, see your good works. and glorify your father which is in heaven and glorify your father which is in heaven Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 16. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works. That they may see your good works. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. Thank you very much. That was very good. Well done. It's good to hear your voice again. Um, um since while I uh, been missed. So okay. So let's see. So we're studying from Leviticus, I hope I spelled that right, Leviticus, yes, 19 from verse 9 to 10. And when you read the harvest of your land, remember we studied with King James Version, so you read it with your own version that you'll understand and will be easy for you to, because that's what the word of God is. Um, he brings it to the level that you'll understand. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not only reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest, and thou shalt not glean the vine thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grip of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. And just to give an, um, a background as to what um, this was talking about, you know, like Leviticus is, 
is an interesting scripture. You, you might fall asleep if you, if you don't have the Holy Spirit to help you. But many times when the Holy Spirit shows you Jesus in some of these scriptures, in some of the old, in some parts of the Old Testament, you're like, wow, and everything. And I want to thank God for everyone that is that re receives revelation from God that shares it with people because it's not easy, to be honest. And I want to encourage every one of us that studying the Bible through the year, you know, um, continue and continue, continue to persevere. The Lord sees your hard work and sees what your 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 heart and sees what you're you're doing. He will reward you in Jesus' name. And if you haven't started reading the Bible through the year or you have never read the Bible through the year, I want to encourage you. You know, it gets easier over time. And the more you do it, this is my um, I think my fifth year or sixty fifth year of doing it. And it's it's just amazing how God just continues to um make the scripture come alive in our life. So this scripture, when when um people that farm what they do is that they normally farm and they declare everything they take everything they declare everything because they don't want to waste anything but god is telling them that unlike the people that are around you that's what they do i want you to be different when you do that i want you to leave some so that people that don't have farm lads or they were not able to um farm or they were not able to get something they'll be able to get something from the, the things that but you see the good thing about this is that it's nothing that just give it to them but they themselves have to come to that place and glean it this is how Ruth met her husband Boaz. Just in case you you, you want to have another picture, and um, the, the Ruth in the Bible re met her husband through this gleaning um kind of thing. So you you'd go to the farm that has already been um harvested. There'll be remnants there. Once you have gone over, it, don't go by it again and now be like, I'm not even going to allow even a little bit to even waste so that you know, as in everything must be for me. But he says, he said, leave the other so that other people can come behind and also help. So that's what the scripture that um, this our topic because um, um, Christian. Christian social responsibility. The Lord is my strength. Christian social responsibility is. So, yes, and that's what is where um, this is. So, we're going to just talk. What do you think Christian social responsibility means based on what I've just said? or based on your own understanding, we're going to just be talking about um, the things that are written here, just discussions. So what do you think Christian social responsibility means and um, why do we even need it? Floor is open. You can type it. I'll read it out once I see it. This time I had it open and it's not going to, right there, I've opened it. Or you can unmute and just say, Christian social responsibility. What do you think it is? You know, we actually have something called corporate social responsibility. So I'm thinking maybe it might be, it might give you a hint. Yes, if you don't answer, I shall call. Let me see who I'll call now. Somebody I've not called in a long while. Thank you. Giving love to people and helping them. Thank you, Mrs. Falaye. So Christian social responsibility, giving love to people and helping them. I want you to just look at the word responsibility there. And maybe that might give you a hint as well. Christian social responsibility. Yes, thank you. We have a duty, and you have used the word responsibility again, to meet the needs of vulnerable members of society. Thank you so much. So we have a duty to meet the needs of vulnerable members of society. I think the, the word that you've used there, vulnerable, is something I would have liked you to expand a little bit. So yeah, somebody wants to say something, unmute and just, and just say it. Hmm. I thought somebody wanted to say something. Okay, so Christian social responsibility. I'll read what it says here and then we'll... Christian social responsibility is a faith-based obligation. You know, Sister uh, Moname says duty. Obligation is like is the same thing. To meet societal needs through the demonstration of love, like uh, Mrs. Falaya said, of love that positively impacts communities and individuals. Often strangers and widows, vulnerable people, thank you. Often strangers, the word stranger is, you know, Stranger danger. I'm just wondering what you mean by strangers. You're not, it's as if you're like you're, you're digging a hole. <laughs> and I'll keep on pointing at something. Yes, often strangers and widows. That's what the word of God says. But what does strangers mean? What does it mean to what does strangers? What does that mean? So, yes, um, orphans and widows. Yes, uh, it says here 
demonstration of love and positively impacts communities and individuals. There's something I want to say. I don't even know if you, maybe some of us might not know, but most of the schools that's, um, that we have here, most of the colleges, universities that we have here, were actually created by um, churches. Well, Christians actually built those schools. Um, if you think about any school, any of these, what they call those elite schools or top ranking schools, many of them were created by Christians. Their bases were actually create were actually um were actually based on um, a Christian ethos. And the idea was that many of these people cannot study by themselves. They don't have the money to study or they don't even know how to read and write. And Christians were the ones that came together. That's where Sunday School actually came out from, just so you understand. Sunday School was actually a proper school on Sundays because many of the children were going to work because they were they could not they could not um um they had to work and help their parents, like go to the farm and everything. So many of them could not read and study. And then the church said, you know what? On Sunday, when you come to church, not only will you hear the word of God, but we'll teach you to read, we'll teach you to write. And that's where Sunday school actually started from. So just um, if you, if, for those of us that want to have an idea as to how Sunday school started um, or what, what we mean by Christian social response. So you just this point, I'm just giving an example of schools, even hospitals, you know, it was a lot of times you find that it's churches that that starts many of these things. Many, many Christians will say, you know, I see this need in the society and I want to help. And God, in his wonderful way, may, helps us to help others. And because the hands that God needs to do things in this earth is our hands. The, the legs that God needs to walk around and God, or the mouth that God needs to talk to people is our mouth. So it's us that God needs, that God uses to, to reach out to people, to talk to people, to um, help people, to um, lay hands on people. I remember when I was um, studying about Jesus and when we we're talking about when Jesus like touched a leprous person, the person probably had never been touched in a long time. Just imagine, because lepers were, were vilified and like, I said, so don't come near me. But Jesus touched that, touched him. And that alone is a healing of it on itself. You know, that alone is a healing of itself. And so many times, the things that we need to do, it might not be so big. I'm talking about churches and um, building hospitals. It might not be that big, but it might be. I don't want you to limit yourself. But it might be something small, helping people in your community, in your in your schools, uh, as in being part of um, those kind of things, helping out. You know, when we did that operation, those children, we never know. They might never know anything about Love Assembly. They will never know that Love Assembly ever existed. But somebody there will be praying. I imagine a child praying that this person that gave me this thing, God bless that person. God bless that person. And you think that prayer is going to just go for not as in nothing no so christian social responsibility is the responsibility we have and remember what i was saying that you cannot give what you don't have so if you if if you look at if you look around you i cannot see that compassion you know jesus was looking around and he said thank you that that is actually a really great idea oh i didn't know you had been typing something i said i was going to be looking sorry let's see <laughs> joining a cleaning team in your school is an example hmm, i didn't even know that was even possible I didn't even know that was possible that you could actually join a cleaning team in, your, in a school. I didn't know you could do that. So there are so many, so many instances. You know, like here in Love Assembly, we are saying that we are no longer, um, we no longer call ourselves volunteers. We are workers in the vineyard of God. We are workers in the in the business of God. We are, we are, we are, we are the staff of God. God is our boss. You know, as in we do things as as a staff will do. You know, you come early, you make sure that you're. This if you are not coming, you let um, your boss know on time before time. You know, as in you make sure that you do your job excellently and your reward is not just, you know, somebody uh, is not just a financial reward. We, prayers is a reward, though financial is a good reward. So if you need to give somebody money, please give the person money. But, it, but it's not just financially, but even um, talking to the person, helping people. That might be your reward. Your reward might just be a thank you. Nobody has said thank you in a long while. Nobody has even come to say hello, you know. Sister Nome talks about fostering. Foster, oh my goodness. Don't want me to get to this thing. <clears throat> oh, fostering is a very beautiful thing, seriously. Uh, from my, my job, I've met people that were that were fostered, and some of them 
when they tell you the stories, they are good stories as well as bad stories, but I'll tell you about the good one, not the bad one. The good stories is really amazing about like, the, even I even had a colleague that her mom was a foster, was her foster, like, like fostered her. So she was, she was saying that if not for her, her foster mom, that her life would have just been rubbish because her other mom, her real, her biological mom was, and um, was into drugs and things like that. And that's, that's something that if you have the, see, don't do anything that you're not, you're, you're, you're not, you have not been led to do. But if you have that burden, you know, like it co keeps coming to your mind. Let me explain what a burden is. It keeps coming to your mind. Anytime you see it, it's something that worries you. Anytime you see it, you're like, oh, I wish somebody would do something. Maybe it might be you, just so you know. It might be you that might be that person. So, um, yeah, so that's corporate social responsibility. And the benefits of Christian social, sorry, not corporate, sorry, Christian, Christian social responsibility. It enables people to see and know the meaning of the love of God. And it meets the needs of the less privileged in society, like Sister Onomer said. Oh, yes, no worries. I'll, you, I'll give you a few minutes to say, give a testimony. So it meets the needs of the less privileged in society. Um, because the truth is, there are some people that are overlooked, but you can see God will open your eyes and you will see those people that are this thing, and it will start coming to your mind a lot more, you know. And then you might be like, God, how can I help these people? And once He has given you that um that desire, He will give you the will to do, He will give you the power. He says, The word of God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you know what that all things that He can do, the things that He has told you to do, not the things that you just want to do by yourself, the things that He has told you to do, He can give you the power to do it, He can give you the um, uh, um willingness, and He will give you the resources. The re it might not come easy because in all of this, he wants to stretch us. He will want to stretch our faith. He will want to stretch our understanding of him. He will want to stretch our dependence on him. He will want to stretch us in many ways. And that is what, uh, because God, hmm, God doesn't just look at one thing as in the one dimension. Now he looks at it in different dimensions. Maybe some, somebody has never understood 3D before. It means different three-dimensional, multi-dimensional. You see it in different aspects, different ways. God, you know, he, he said that he stays at the top and he's looking below. He can see it everything that is happening, all the connecting dots and all of that. So when even when he puts something in your will, he knows that there's somebody far off that would that would um benefit from it. It means it needs, um it promotes evangelism and entrenches the church of God in the hearts and minds of the people we come across. Um I remember when we were litter picking round round the city center and you know people would make fun of i didn't even understand why people were making fun of us now based on my other voluntary role that i now understand why people make fun of us because basically they just be think that you must have done something wrong you're in probation that means you must have been an offender and they'll be like ah, what did you do but actually you're just keeping the, the, this thing clean and you know i now realize that other people do not really look at do, do not look at that lightly they're like wow how can you have done that for free why? Why are you cleaning? Why? Why are you going around police Why? What is the what? 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 Are, what? What do you want to gain? You know. And but we're just following the instruction of God, and up to now we still have not seen the benefits. As in, we have not be, begun to see how much God has blessed us just for following that instruction. Um, to enable the church to build a good relationship with the community, which is what I just said about litter picking because people around us if they, even when we, we wanted to um all the places that we actually um got houses uh, not houses <laughs> buildings to 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 worship in the community were very accepting and open towards us because they saw that we didn't come to come and collect we came to give and we didn't want to just get 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 we wanted to give and that was part of it uh it will enable the church to be okay it helps the believers to present jesus physically in the community and it can open the door to individual people to receive the Lord Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And remember that the memory verse says, to glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light so shine. And Sister Emma, you can unmute and give your, your testimony if you can. Yeah, it's just it's like some years ago, um, we had a friend who was, um, was diagnosed with cancer and uh, she had an only child. And, uh, you know, we were, were, were nursing her, helping her. Um, and, uh, you know, we began to take the child for the odd day just to help her out. And one day went to a weekend and it was half term. And uh, in the meantime, she was becoming more and more sick. 
uh, and so she had to be admitted to a hospice and, and it was at that point I came to the realization oh my goodness we have this child nobody knows that we're with this child and I went into a meltdown I was crying I was panicking because I said I don't want to, to be looking after somebody's child he has learning difficulties and I just said Lord I don't I don't want I don't want I don't want I don't want and uh, it, it, to cut a story short the local authority got involved uh, and I told them look you can we're not fighting you because they thought we were trying to kidnap him I said please we're not fighting you. please you can take him we were just helping out a friend and they said well actually uh, we have heard all that you have been doing the school have told us the uh, the hospice have told us uh, friends have told us please we would like you to keep this child I just began to cry because I was thinking to myself I don't want you know we have five I said we have five amazing children we're very happy with those children we were not looking uh, to do this uh, but in the end we had to go through a full fostering assessment and uh, we fostered this child for for two years he stayed with us we loved him we cared for him uh, his dad we found his dad his dad came to know Christ we, he's, he's 20 years old now we we had him when he was 12 uh he you know he's a lovely young man who still comes to visit us in the holidays uh, and uh you know he's, he's currently getting ready to relocate back to Liverpool that but that was that was a God, that was definitely God. And God used us to be able to preach Christ to the dad, um, to the local authority, to the judge, you know, because we had to go to court uh, and we didn't hide our faith. Um, we brought it because we want to let them know this is what, you know, he, he will be, this is the kind of family he is going to be in. Uh, and we're not going to water down. We're not going to hide it. We are born again, spirit-filled Christians who read the Bible. And uh, as I said, the young man, uh, he's a very lovely young man today who, you know, knows God. His dad also knows God. That is an amazing testimony. As in, I don't even know how to like, I was about to start crying. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that testimony. And, you know, many, many times we don't know what's the need that is, that is, that is needed. <laughs> we don't know what is available as in like the things that people can do the things that you can do you never know until something like this comes up and then you know it's as if God sneaked up on you <laughs> because you do that if you just keep back I, I, I did take this child you know, you'll be like nah but then little by little that's how it just happened and you are blessed not just a generation a whole like lineage is just amazing thank you so much for sharing that testimony and I hope it encourages us you know because sometimes it might be something that we don't we don't even want to do, but is um is what we have to do. Do, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions? Okay. Um. So I think we've answered most of these um discussions. Just to add, for some of us looking to find our purpose in life, we often find it in the course of meeting needs around us. That is very true. That is very true. Um, thank you, Dr. Oche. So many times we might just be like, I don't even understand why, why I'm doing this or what the purpose is, what my life, why am I, why am I here? But many times you find out that when you're doing what you're doing, then God will just say, You see this thing you're doing, that's what you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> and stuff. And but sometimes you might be like, you know, get distracted by, you know, oh, it's about the money or it's about the fame, the reputation, the recognition and everything. Meanwhile, it's about people because God's business is always about people. So that let us um, focus on that. Even as we do our Christian social responsibilities, it's all about people. It's always about people. So that, that's what God focuses on. Um, and that's what his own, he always, he's always responsible towards us. So thank you so much for joining in the um, Sunday School. That was spring. Daddy, I thank you so much for helping us to understand a little bit more about what our responsibilities are as Christians. And Lord, it might seem daunting, it's like there's so many problems in the world, but you don't even want us to solve all the problems in the world. You just want us to do the things that you have asked us to do and you will sort out the rest. And I ask that you help us, even if it's just one child, even if it's just one person, even if it's just one thing, that Lord, you help us to be committed to that and to do it with excellency and with a joy in our hearts in the name of Jesus. I ask that all of us, for those of us that have already started, that you continue to encourage us, continue to help us. And for those of us that are now open to, to starting, I ask that you would show us where and how 
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Um, uh, amen. Sorry, sorry to cut in. Uh, just uh, talking about the social Christians' social responsibility. Please, our project Isaiah 60 is still as alive as it was uh, when we started, launched it last year. So please, you have an idea of some social responsibility of the need around. That's what this project Isaiah 60 was started for. Some are still ongoing. So we want to launch and start new projects like that. Please see Dr. Uche. Dr. Uche is uh, the team leader for the uh, our corporate, uh, what's it called now? Dr. Uche, on mute. Introduce yourself and please see Dr. Uche, okay? Dr. Uche, are you still there? Uh, yes, sir, I'm here. Yes, what's your team called, sir? Your team, your team that's responsible for Project Isaiah 60. All right, uh, I think he's forgotten the name of his team. <laughs> community outreach. The community Hello? outreach. Community okay. outreach welfare team. It seems like maybe it's in motion. That's why yes. okay. it's cutting in and out. So I was okay, going help. to mention I was going to mention the project Isaiah um and 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 um thank you for reminding me, Pastor. So yes, we have the um project Isaiah um project Isaiah project <laughs> project Isaiah sixty Isaiah sixty project Isaiah sixty. We have a Facebook page if you're interested. Um, I'll put this in our next um class. So yes, so thank you so much for joining us and um, see Dr. Uche, if you have any ideas, you can see me or see Pastor as well, if you have any ideas, see you later, bye-bye. Come, Zion, it's for me. 